My name is Bruce. I am uh, 42 years old. I have uh, three children. Uh, my oldest is 20 years old. My middle child is nine, and she's here with us today. And my youngest son is uh, four and a half. Um, been married for 11 years this year. I think I got that right. Um, I'm also a full-time student at Ames Community College, um, where I'm striving hard to maintain a 4.0 GPA. Um, last semester, I had the opportunity to be on the student government as the vice president of campus life. Um, had a lot of great opportunities um, come to me since I started my college education at Ames. Um, I have a couple disabilities. One of my disabilities, I have a uh, speech impediment from time to time. Um, when I was younger, people uh, would make fun of me for doing that. And I couldn't say a sentence to save my life when I was younger. Um, also, I have Tourette syndrome. I don't know if many of you know what that is, but what that is, Tourette syndrome. I have a mild case of Tourette syndrome. So, but what that is, uh, body and body movements that so you don't have control of that. Um, sometimes people would blurt out foul language, which. I'm not doing that today, so some of you might think that's pretty cool, but I'm not going to swear today. Um, I'm going to put my best foot forward on that. So, um, I also had a severe club foot, and it was to the point that uh, I had to have eight surgeries. And, and uh, the last one I was 17 years old, the first one I was uh, two weeks old. In middle school, I decided to... Uh, lack of a better word, make fun of myself because everyone else is already doing it, so I'm going to beat them to the punch. And by doing that, um, I took the power away from them to make fun of me. And once I began to, to uh, make jokes about my disabilities, if you will, or, 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 or uh, whatever, um, they didn't make fun of me that much anymore. In fact, people started looking at me in a different light. They started looking at me like, hey, Bruce is kind of cool. Let's go hang out with Lefty over there, you know? And, um, you know, he's all right. And so, and I brought that into my adult life. And I have to warn you guys that uh, I have leg jokes. I have a ton of leg jokes. And in fact, before I came on stage, I had to uh, plug my leg in to get energized because I don't know how y'all get up so early in the morning to do this, but um, never thought I'd see the day that I would be able to relate to a tree stump. Um, but I can. Uh, I don't. I didn't talk to this tree stump. And, and then um, when I was with the AIM Student Government Association, we went on this retreat, this ropes course down in Florida, Colorado. And the upper right picture, um, it's not me. Um, in fact, some of you go on vacation, take spare shoes or whatever. I take a spare leg with me. Um, run that by TSA. And uh, this, this is why I left for the maid to come in and make my room up all nice for me. And, I loved to be a fly on the wall on that day. My leg fell off on the floor. But anyway, going along with my humor, um, um, every time I think of a below-the-knee amputee, which has the initials of BKA, um, I think of Burger King. Um, maybe it's just because I want a Whopper. I don't know. But in a way, I've had it my way. Um, this was my choice, and this was uh, the best plan for me at the time. So I've had it my way. Um, and again, my humor goes on to Elf on the Shelf, sorry. And uh, um, he's probably mad at me right now, but, but he's the BKA, Elf on the Shelf. That was the big joke at our house this Christmas. So. And uh, um, I probably made Mark Zuckerberg mad whenever I cut off his thumb, but hey, thumbs up for amputees, you know? So um, part of my stupid humor. So, but it wasn't always this way with my humor and, my personality the way it is and, and everything. And I just uh, realized over the last, well, last summer that going into this new life, a part of me had died. I had lost my identity as a truck driver, as the video showed. And uh, I had no idea who I was. I had no idea what tomorrow is going to hold after my amputation was over. And then after thinking about that, I realized that I was actually going in through the grieving process. And part of that, you know, denial of shot 2009, I lost four jobs in that year. And, uh, you know, I was like, no, nah, I just go get another job. But, you know, along with that came confusion and fear um, and, then, and then angry. I was angry going into my amputation. And uh, 
you know, I was angry at God. I was like, you know, I never asked for a birth defect. I never asked for Tourette's syndrome. And I never asked for a speech impediment. And uh, it's all your fault. I was blaming everyone around me. In fact, I was to the point that uh, I would uh, get mad at the people around me who I love the most. Um, and who mattered the most. And, and I was taking my frustration out on them. And I was irritated. I was embarrassed. Uh, I'm not a man anymore. I can't provide for my family, you know. And uh, and then came in the ugly face of depression. I didn't want to face the fact that my foot's starting to fail me, and life is about to change. Um, and in this timeline, you can see that there is no specific order. Um, you know, I bounce back and forth, and um, the lowest point was at my depression. And I was at the point to where I was thinking that uh, i do everybody else a favor if I just killed myself. My wife has to take care of me after my amputation. My, I can't provide for my kids. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and I just didn't come out one day and say, just think that, you know, I'd have just killed myself. I thought about it often. I thought about it regularly. I would get out of bed. I would think about it. I would perform things throughout the day, I'd think about it, because after my amputation, I was sitting in my chair and saying, well, this is, this is life. Uh, the next big thing in my life at age 39, well, 40 at that point, was uh, to die. And um, I would pray that my life would just end. It would be doing everybody a favor. Um, but, you know, I still continued to wear the mask. I, I kept all that pent up inside. I didn't know it was okay to talk to someone about my depression. Uh, my wife had even told me, I don't do psych, so, you know, I can do your physical, but I don't, I don't talk about psych, so I couldn't talk to my wife. Maybe I was in the realization that my life was about to change. I, did, I didn't want to face up to that fact. I don't know, but I wore a lot of masks. I couldn't let my wife know. I couldn't let my parents know. I certainly can't let staff and faculty at Ames know what was going on. And even if I did talk about it to somebody, I wouldn't even know what to say. I couldn't articulate um, the words. I knew what I was feeling, but I didn't know how to say it. And, uh, but when I'm out in the public and around everyone else, I was happy-go-lucky, you know, Bruce is okay, Bruce is cool. And uh, um, Bruce has it all together. When really on the inside, I was screaming for help. I was dying, you know, and, and uh, talk to some people from my church and they'd be like, oh, just give it to Jesus. He'll help you. I was like, why would I do that? He made me this way. So, in thinking about this whole thing, I got thinking about my timeline. You know, each one of us, when we have a circumstance in our life, we, we have a specific timeline and a process that we have to go through. And a lot of people said, ah, just get over it, you know, and sounds good in theory, but you can't. It's not like flipping on a switch and and moving on with life. But, but, you know, along the way, I've had a lot of bumps and cracks and dips in the road. And, um, you know, in 2009, I already mentioned, you know, I was in denial. I, I was in denial that my life is about to change. I just got another job. I replaced that other job with something else. And, and it was always back and forth. As you can see, it's not a chronological smooth path. Um, you bounce around, and bouncing around is exhausting. And at the bottom of my depression, linked with that, was my thoughts of suicide. There wasn't a day that went by before my amputation, and, and it intensified after my amputation, that, that I would just be better off if, if, if Bruce would clock out. If Bruce just hit the time clock and call it over and call it done, my wife would be better, my family would be better. No one would miss me, is what I had thought. Um, but when I was in Ames going, as my first semester as being a student there, and um, between summer and spring semester, um, I started thinking about this song by Johnny Cash by the name of uh, Hurt. Um, some of you might know it, some might not, but the song had a new meaning to me. And, and I had to hear it. I had to hear this song like I needed my next breath. And when I heard that song, I hurt. I, I felt like I was dying inside. And I didn't know what was going on. And uh, so I had this idea one day to, to just make a movie, uh, you know, a small video to it, and uh, uh, which the video's on my website. But uh, um, 
I found my pictures, because some pictures on the internet, and, uh, and I chronologically placed it in the song, and, uh, you know, I cried. It took me three days. I cried a lot when I made this, and when I finally made it, I sat and watched it for hours and hours and hours, and I cried even more and more and more. But when I had first met Chris and Michelle six to seven months ago, um, I realized that uh, I had journaled my feelings and I had dealt with them in that manner. I didn't talk to anybody. I'm not saying this works for everybody and this is the right thing to do, but it's where I was and it worked for me. And I was able to see it for what it was, the, the ugly face of suicide, the ugly face of depression. And with that, I was able to move forward up, up the other side of my timeline. Before the video, I tried to, to climb up the, the other side, but I couldn't do it. I'd fall back down, and I and I go back to anger, and, and then I go back to depression, and then I go back to my suicidal th thoughts, and I go back to anger. So so I started to climb up out of my hole from my depression and my thoughts of suicide. I didn't think about it that much anymore. And uh, over the summer, like I said, I was I was involved with the student government association. I started building my self esteem up, and I was slowly able to climb out of this hole. Time to time, yes, I slipped and I went back to anger and I went back to denial and I went back to depression, but then I came to a point where I accepted it. This is my life, this is who I am. I have to get to know me all over again. And just started moving forward to my future, whatever that may be. And, and I just started to reach out to other people. And, and I started to find the meaning of my life and the significance the new significance of my life. You know, when I lost my job as a truck driver, in all actuality, a part of me had died. And uh, I had to get to know who I was all over again. And I started to improve my self-esteem, which gave me empowerment. And, and, and I had meaning and purpose to my life at that point, because where I'm at now, I am able to share with others and to share my story with others that they may get something out of it. And, and in fact, people on Ames have said, man, if you can do this, if you can make it to class, if you can get good grades with one leg and, and you have boils and you have to be in your wheelchair from time to time, you still don't miss a day of class, then my situation isn't that severe. There's even people worse off than I am and they count their blessings every day with a smile on their face. Um, so I started to look at this through, you know, I, you know, I now have hope. You know, I you know my first glimpse of hope is when my friend Mike Shea um, met me on Facebook. And he pretty much said, get off your butt, do something significant with your life because your life has purpose, your life has meaning. Get out there and do it. And that's when I started going to Ames. So as I sit here and tell you all this, you know, I just ask you, um, what's your circumstance? What's that one thing that you're going through in your life that you think, I can't get over this, no one can know about this, I can't talk about it. And, and, you know, I can't move past this. You can. You can move past this. You know, I thought the same things. I can't talk about it, but you need to talk about it. Me standing here in front of you today talking about my situation and my circumstance helps me heal emotionally on the inside each and every time. And, you, you know, if you, you don't think you can reach out to anybody, you know you can. There's, there's, there's people here on this campus who wants to talk to you, who, who wants to help you work past that circumstance. And, or, or, you know, there's national crisis hotlines, uh, North Range Behavioral Health. Um, there's things in place to where you don't have to live with your depression. You can get past this. It is curable. It is treatable. And, and you can move on. Do I still have depression from time to time? Yes, I do. But I'm at a point where I can recognize it and change my behavior and change my habits and move on to where I don't get down in that hole that you saw of depression and thoughts of suicide again. Um, just move forward. And I started to gain insight of my life of being an amputee when I was at the ropes course with Baines Community College on the student government. I'm not saying each and every one of you have to get out there and climb a tree and conquer your circumstance, but that's what I did. And if I didn't climb that tree, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Um, I never had an inkling of a clue why I wanted to climb a tree, but you know, it was given to me as, as an obstacle. And I could have easily sat down and said, no, I'm an amputee, I can't do that. But you know, I tried it. The worst thing that could have happened is what? I could have failed and I couldn't have done it. But I did it. And not only did I climb 25, 30 feet in the air, I was able to walk out on the tightrope holding nothing 
but ropes dangling down a couple feet above me. And I saw these pictures for the first time, and I was like, who is that? Who is that guy? And I wanted to get to know him all over again. And just in January of 4th, I went on to uh, Winter Park and tried snowboarding for the first time. My friend Mike Shea, I mentioned a bit ago, um, he snowboards, and he's a left amputee. And in fact, he's going to be um, going to the Paralympic Games in Sochi, Russia in 2014. And he had a goal, he had a dream, and he's meeting that goal, he's meeting that dream. As in each and every one of us have our goals to meet our dreams. In fact, I'm gonna go snowboarding um, at Eldora on the, the 16th of this month. Um, again, as I said in the video, a life without limits. Um, you don't know what your limitations are until you push the limits. And, and to get past the circumstance that you think you can't get past. So, I'm moving forward in a way that, to help people, and I created a website. On my website, there's links to my Facebook page, my YouTube, um, see all the videos I've made and I, I, I put out, and it's an opportunity for others to get help. There's also resource links on there to, for you to reach out to and to talk to people also. And in doing that, you know, I look at this moment right now and, and what I've gone through as my tragic moment in my life, my life-changing circumstance to help others, to help others see what their future might look like if they just push past their circumstance and talk about it and get the help that, that's out there that they need. So I end with a picture that tells a story. Um, on my road to change, I ask myself, what might my finest hour be? Well, I feel I'm in my finest hour. My finest hour is only gonna improve as you will have the finest hour and move forward in life. The ambulance represents the circumstance and then everything between is, is, is getting the help to move forward. And, and then once you get the courage and the confidence and the help that you need, you're really unstoppable. So I ask, you know, on your road to change, what might your finest hour be? I feel I'm in my finest hour, and my finest hour can only improve by sharing with you and sharing with others and moving forward without looking back. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank North Ranch Behavioral Health and Greeley West for inviting me here today. And uh, I give it to Chris, Chris Michelle at this time.